It is Monday, so you will not be talking about the subject of my realm of reality, will you, David? You will instead be talking about a game, or subject involving your company or game. Well, kind of. I will be reviewing a game today, but the game is actually within the subject of your world. With my world and timeline, there is a game by Owlcat Games, which is doing very well, and I'm glad it's doing very well. Owlcat is a Russian company who worked on two Pathfinder First Edition games based off adventure paths written by Paizo, specifically Wrath of the Righteous and Kingseeker, Kingseeker being the connecting event between First and Second Edition Pathfinder. But recently they made a game about the 40k universe, specifically the game we'll be talking about today. Rogue Trader by Fantasy Flight Games. This RPG was created in 2009. Dear god, that was 15 years ago. But on their website, they've made a Game of Thrones game, which bothers me that it uses that name instead of the Song of Ice and Fire name of the books. Marvel Universe, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Legend of the Five Rings, Doom, and others. This game is no longer printed by the company, but they still have their quick start introduction game for the system, Forsaken Bounty, available if you google the name and find the direct link on their website. No cost, so that's good. Finding a physical copy of this game is a hunt and a half. I heard about it through YouTube videos some 3 or 4 years ago when I got into Starfinder. Unfortunately, the best way I can think to get this game's book and other informative books involving it is piracy. And this video will now be hidden from people, so I can say whatever the fuck I want. Danny, say some profanity. Zero one zero 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 one one zero zero one 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 zero one zero one zero one one zero 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 one one zero one one zero one zero one one did you just binary code the word fuck yes and you know what you might be more human than i initially thought good on you do not insult me in such a way from the moment I- Yeah, 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 weakness of the flesh, disgust, I've heard it all before, I've played Mechanicus. But, do you know what a rogue trader is? A sanctioned mercenary licensed by the Imperium, often a specific High Lord of Terra, in order to travel outside the limits of Imperium space, in order to find new resources, new STCs, or even find human worlds that have yet to be brought into the Imperium of Man. Some rogue traders seek to go into the Halo Stars, though some seek rogue trader sanctions simply out of the legality of them owning servitors. Some wish to find treasures that the Imperium will pay for. They often come into conflict with us of the Adeptus Mechanicus or the Inquisitors of Terra, Sometimes they conflict with new species of aliens, often finding themselves in line with the Ordo Xenos of the Inquisition. All in all, rogue traders are not well trusted, but they are well paid, so they do their jobs. I... wait. That's actually an apt description. Huh. Well, let's talk about the RPG. This game works off the percentage system, similar to Call of Cthulhu. This game has six steps to character creation. They are as follows. Generate characteristics, choose an origin path, spend experience points, personal information, profit, factor, and ship points, and then equipment. Each of these steps are sort of... Well, some are self-explanatory, some aren't. So we'll go into the ones I actually need to explain. First is generating skills. This can be done in two different ways. The primary way is to roll 2d10 and add the numbers together, then add 25. 
So the highest you can get from this is 45, while the lowest is 27. There's also the spend points option, which would be to have everything start at 25, then spend 100 points across the 8 or 9 skills, adding no more than 20 to any one skill. This could lead to having the highest being 45, but the lowest being 25, since you could only put 5 skills at max. The skills are as follows, and follow older 40k naming conventions. Weapon skill is your melee stuff, ballistic skill is your range stuff, not just guns, strength is your physical capability, toughness is your ability to take a hit and keep on trucking, agility is your quickness and ability to dodge, intelligence is your ability to think and reason, perception is your notice, willpower is essentially how well you can take news that your tax bracket just got increased, and fellowship is how good you are at lying, charming, and fucking someone. At every interval of 10, you get something called a characteristic bonus, which more determines how well you succeed or fail at something. So, say you have a 37 in something, you have a characteristic bonus of the category of 3. Origin paths are a bit of a thing you need to go through. You choose your home world, your birth conditions, what brought you into space travel, your hardships through life, your motivation, and your career. Choice. Each one will give you different bonuses and different things. I won't go into this as the book puts the page sideways and my neck hurts from trying to read the PDF, but I do recommend going through this section and making an interesting story. Though here on YouTube, I can turn it sideways like, or rather correct, like this. Yeah. Spending experience points is the next thing. All characters start with 4,500 experience points to spend, but with what you rolled before, this is assumed to already be spent. This part seems to only be concerned if you want to bring a Dark Heresy character into the Rogue Trader game. Add that game to my list to review. Then comes the profit factor and ship points. This can be done in multiple ways. One option is to roll a d10 and go off the chart. The higher one, the lower the other. Some GMs might let you choose for yourself, or choose themselves for you. There's a lot of ways to go about it, but it essentially reads that if you're rich, you don't have a great ship. But if you're poor, you're assumed to have spent all that money on the sweet ride you just got. Selecting equipment really should be obvious. Now, we need to go back to the origin path thing, as career choice was one of the options there. D Chapter 2 describes the career paths, which are essentially your classes. This part shows advancement of your characteristics and skills and such. Apparently, every advancement increases a number by 5, but every time you increase it, it'll cost 250 more than the last time. So, say you maxed out toughness at 45. You want to bring it up to 50. It'll cost you 250 experience points. If you want to bring it up to 55, it'll cost you another 500. Want to bring it up again? Seven, another 750 on top. One last time, another 1000 on top. And it seems as though that's the maximum you can do, increase something by a total of 20, though some GMs might uncap this. There's eight classes in the core rulebook. Book. Arc Militant, which is your soldier military leader. Astropath Transcendent, which is your psychic communicator. Explorator, which seems to be your techie missionary, which is your doctor and priest. Navigator is your mutant psychic warp GPS. Rogue trader, which is essentially your rogue mixed with a bard mixed with the boss. Sensational? I'm pronouncing that wrong. It seems to be the result of an informer and a rogue having a drunken Valentine's Day night, and Voidmaster, which seems to be the guy you need when someone doesn't know how to fly a starship. At this point, the game goes into a lot more. It's 
kind of difficult actually to go into. That's a bit of a problem with this. It's insanely complicated. And because of that complexity, you have to assume everything you come across is going to be just as complex and probably more powerful. A boulder literally explodes on contact. You have to plot and think everything through. So when it comes to grading this game, we've got some problems. You can't get this officially anymore. You need to find a PDF online or get lucky when finding a physical copy. The character creation is very jarring. It, and it helps to have a YouTube video. But you look this up, you'll mostly just find the new video game. You have to think about every single action, as every action has a negative reaction in the Grimdark setting. You can't just say, fuck it, we ballin', because ballin' is gonna get you and your crew killed. All in all, I unfortunately have to give this game an 80% even. It's not bad. But given the current climate of people being afraid of failure and being afraid to try something new, this old game will likely make people shy away, despite being very well set up for a long-running campaign. But maybe the new Owlcat game will get people to try it out, or maybe we'll get a new edition of the Rogue Trader RPG. But Danny, let's talk about your codex next. Prepare yourself for that, and shove off.